husband. Yes, wife. Let's read the Bible. But we're atheists. Why would we want to do such a thing? Because we live in small town USA and everyone around us quotes this thing extensively and we have no idea how to respond? That's true. Neither of us grew up with religion, yet Christianity is playing a huge part in our country's politics. We're not scholars or academics, so sacrilegious discourse is our first take reaction. And this feed houses our reading of the book of Genesis, and each subsequent book will get its own separate feed too. Why are we separating each book? Not all podcast platforms allow access to older episodes. This will ensure our listeners don't lose access to any of our previously released material. You can find our most recent episodes on our main channel, Sacrilegious Discourse. That's right. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey you, welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. I'm wife. And together we're reading the Bible. Starting with Genesis and eventually ending with Revelations, we're working through every book and offering our atheist two cents. Or shekels. Yeah, those. (laughs) We're asking questions and pointing out all the nonsense. We aren't academics or scholars. Nope. In fact, when it comes to religion, we really don't know anything at all. What we've learned so far is that God's a dick. Oh, he really is, isn't he? If you're interested in how we reached this startling conclusion, maybe start from episode one. Otherwise, jump in anywhere. It's all good. Yep. Hey, you, husband. Hey, you, wife. Um, we're about to start um, Genesis chapters 12 and 13. Can't wait. Do you think it'll be better than the last one? Nope. <laughs> I think I see some story up ahead. Oh, well, that's awesome. Because I'm done with the begatting. Yeah, me too. Let's do this. Yep. Hey, wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes, because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. <laughs> So we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are. And our supporters can go there and support us. And we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it it escalates on a sliding scale of, you know, cheap to to not cheap. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So what exactly is patreon it's a place where you can show your support for our podcast and just our podcast any podcast or any <laughs> performer but you know we're the ones that you know you're listening to right now so maybe you should uh, you know support us that'd be awesome that would be awesome but we love you anyway so all you got to do is go to patreon look up sacrilegious discourse it's actually patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse is our actual main page there so head on over and send us some love yeah Okay, so we're doing Genesis chapter 12, God's call to Abram. Do you think he used a cell phone? I'm going to guess if he did that it wasn't a very good signal. (laughs) (laughs) They didn't have the 5G back then. No 5G for you. Two Mm -hmm. years. (laughs) But um, at least there's some story coming. Yeah, that sounds like excitement. Let's see. Maybe. I know. Yeah, don't get your hopes up too high. Right. Okay, here we go. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. Well, that's some high promise in there. (laughs) He's he's like, like, dude, I'll make you famous. (laughs) (laughs) All right, young guns. <laughs> All the families on earth will be blessed through you. I mean, you kind of got to go under a promise I like guess, that, I right? guess, yeah. You're like going to be a rock star. You're going to be a rock star. <laughs> I guess this isn't the place where we praise Nickelback, huh? No. Dang it. Okay. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75. Hey, we said we knew Lot. There he is. There's Lot. There goes some Lot. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. 
When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. Like Sheshwan? Shechem. Yeah, sure. Shechem mouth. I don't know. <laughs> there he set up camp beside the Oak of Mora. Yeah, the you know, that oak one of Mora, oak. Huh? Yeah. The one oak. You okay. know, the oak. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Yeah, I hate it when people are already living where Damn I'm going. Damn Canaanites. Get those fuckers out of here. I don't know if they're fuckers. Don't be so rude. Oh, sorry. Maybe they're pleasant, Maybe they're good nice people. people. You're right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, after all... Weren't those the people that were cursed or something like that? Or is that somebody know. else? I mean, God killed a lot of people. He killed so... a lot of people. So, I mean... But, like, back when Noah, like, you know, got drunk. Remember he cursed the one son? Oh, yeah. Or the grandson. The grandson. The grandson. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember which one it was, though. I don't know. Okay. I, it's too many people to keep straight. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. Man, the Lord never appears to me. I know, right? After that, he appeared all the time back then. I know. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. <laughs> okay. I want to say it just like that. It's spelled A I Ai. That sounds, yeah. Ai. <laughs> there he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. These are probably the altars where they sacrifice stuff, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah. Worship and sacrifice. Worship right. and sacrifice. Right. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. Negev? Negev? I don't know. I have no idea either. Okay, so here we start um, Abram in Egypt. It's not a new chapter, just a new little part of the story. Well, I saw your finger getting ready to No, it it didn't. It it was nowhere near it, actually. Okay, well, we'll see. Abram in Egypt. Oh! I lost my place. (laughs) Oh, no. I lost my Abram. We can't lose Abram. I lost Abram. Okay, there he is. He's He's in in Egypt. Egypt. (laughs) (laughs) I accidentally click on one of the little Uh verse numbers. At that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt where he lived as a foreigner. You foreigner. So, wait, wait. I thought God promised that if he went to Canaan that he'd be like a rock star, pseudo, like famous guy. And now he's being forced to go down to Egypt because famine. Uh, dude, I don't know if they had GPS. I think God's a liar. Maybe like, maybe I God he... lied or maybe they read the map wrong. I, I don't know. I okay. can't tell you. All right. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife, Sarai, Look, you are a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Let's kill him. Then we can have her. <laughs> I mean, when you, you got to like assume. good people. When you got to assume that's what's going to happen, you know that you are not living in good times. Right. And like, I mean. They're going to say, she's so pretty. Let's kill her. It only took a few generations apparently to get back to shitty people again. Yeah. 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 Nobody learns. Sounds familiar. Right. So please tell them you are my sister. How does that help? Because then they can just rape her without killing him instead of. Killing oh him God. and then raping her. Oh, so it's okay if she gets raped. But yeah, I mean, she's pretty. So long as he doesn't die. She's pretty. She's going to get raped regardless. Okay. As long as, I mean. Raper's going to rape. Raper's going to rape and potato's going to potate and hater's going to hate. Okay. And, I mean, the question is not whether she's going to get raped. It's whether dude is going to live or die. Right. Okay. And you know those men's, they're important. I mean, according to this, men are just mere beasts, you know? They can't help themselves. Right. But they're also very important. They're important. Much more important than the women. They're important beasts. Yeah. So please tell them you are my sister. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. (laughs) (laughs) That's what he thinks. I don't know if that's a good plan, but it doesn't sound like it's solid. Right. I don't think I... I don't think I'd take you on a trip where I knew somebody was going to rape you. I mean, maybe he thinks that they won't rape her. Mm. But it seems like It doesn't he's... seem like that's what he thinks. I know, right? Like, but, you I know, like, maybe I'm wrong. Let's just live here, dude. And I think you would be like, yeah, that's a good solid plan. Right. I mean, famine or rape. Let's just, let's go with famine. Yeah. I'm good with famine. I appreciate that in you. Thank you, husband. Yeah, no problem, wife. 
<laughs> and sure enough, oh, we were wrong. Apparently it was a solid plan. And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone noticed Sarai's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarai was taken into his palace. Then Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her. Sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. It doesn't say they didn't rape her. It doesn't say that they didn't and rape her. And they're giving them an awful lot of gifts. Let me ask you this. Where it says servants, do you think that we could replace that with the word slave? Well, yeah. Because if you're giving somebody a person. Yeah, their property, that's a slave. Yeah. So why don't they just say slave instead of servant? Because the Bible's not that progressive yet. Oh, okay. Not even this um, translation? No. no. Okay, well... That'd be like a Bible that we we wrote. Yeah. That would be a Bible that somebody that is not a Christian wrote. Because you can't can't say that there were slaves. Well, I can. And I am saying, you know what? Henceforth, every time I see the word servant, I'm going to replace it with slave. I'll probably make a note as I do so. But I am anti-slave. And I'm also anti-whitewashing history. I would hope most people that are listening to this are anti-slave. Most people that are listening to this, yes, but there are too many who are not anti-slave, and I don't like those people. I don't know. Okay. They're poopy. All right. You should all be anti-slave. Right. For sure. And whitewashing history. We're we're not for whitewashing history. You should be anti-whitewashing history. Right. Sorry, I was just making sure that was clear, (laughs) because... Yes, let us not whitewash history and let us say slave where they mean slave, but they say something else. Right. Oh, okay. side note. Yeah. Jesus was brown. He was brown. He was brown. Least... He was not white. I don't care what you try to tell me. Exactly. We're not at that part of the book. That's the New but Testament. But I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. But yeah, it's worth saying. Right. Okay. So if you wondered where we stand before you kick us to the curb, you should know. That Jesus be brown. Jesus be brown. We, I'm not. Mm-mm. No, Jesus was definitely brown. For sure. Okay. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So basically, the Lord was like, bitch, you're too pretty for the Pharaoh. Get out. Abram, take your wife and get. I don't understand. Why is the Lord mad at Pharaoh? Probably because he's raping his wife. Because he's raping Abram's wife? Yeah. And Abram was like, you know, God's dude. Okay, that's true. I'm so confused. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and accused him sharply. So basically, if you ever have a plague on you, like what we have now, Mm -hmm. you should definitely assume it's personal and that God is getting you. Well, he came down and talked to them back in those days. But did he talk to Pharaoh? It doesn't say that. He cursed him. But, okay, but God did not come talk to Pharaoh. Right. So right. Pharaoh's just assuming, well, there's a pox on me, so clearly God is pissed and it must be Abram's fault. And so he said, Abram, what have you done to me? He demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Whoa, that was a leap. Right? They never said that he said that as How did he wife. figure that out? God must have told him. Right. Why did you say she is my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? See, I told you there was some rape. Oh, that is rape right there. That is some serious ass rape. I told you. Abram's not, oh, he's Abram. not completely okay. Because he took lots of gifts for this. You know? Yeah. Poor Sarai. Right? She had no choice one way or the other. She Women just, had it shitty back then. Oh, I'm. this is not okay. Right? Now then, here's your wife. Take her and get out of here. GTFO, bitch. (laughs) And take your box with you. Pharaoh ordered some of his men to escort them, and he sent Abram out of the country along with his wife and all his possessions. Well, at least he let him keep all his possessions that he gave him, I guess. And his raped-ass wife. Right, so he got out of that pretty good, I guess. Abram did get out of that pretty good. Yeah. All right, but still, I'm sorry for Sarai. Yeah, that's shitty. And I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. But I think God's kind of shitty, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I don't know. If you've got the power to let somebody not get raped, and you're like, I'm just going to see how this plays out. Well, he also visits sometimes. Why didn't he just come down and be like, dudes, just let this guy pass and I won't screw with you. Yeah, exactly. You know? No poxes. Like, Abram and... was his dude, right? Yeah. Like, he's like, I'm going to make you famous, dude. Yeah, I'm going to make you famous, but along the way, your wife's going to get a lot of rape in. Right. I mean, what? Yeah, that's stupid. This story's dumb. Okay, that's the end of that chapter. All right, we'll see you at chapter 13 in just a minute. I can't wait to see what happens. (music) 
Okay, Genesis chapter 13. All right, lucky 13. (laughs) Abram and Lot separate. Are you ready? Okay. So Abram left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev, 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 Negative, along with his wife and Lot and all that they owned, including those servants, which are actually slaves. Right. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Because he let his wife be raped a lot. Yeah. And taken as a (laughs) wife by the pharaoh. Right. My wife is so beautiful. I sold her ass for all these jewels. Look at me. And he's in God's favor. Nice. Right. right. That says a lot about a God, I think. (laughs) Was this how he was supposed to get rich and famous? Who knows, but I don't appreciate it. Right. From the Negev... They continued traveling by stages toward Bethel, and they pitched their tents. <laughs> pitched their tents between. I know I'm so dirty, but I can't hear. Pitch mm-hmm. the tent without thinking mm-hmm. naughty things. Right. Sorry. They pitched their tents between Bethel and Ai, where they had camped before. Mm. This was the same place where Abram had built the altar. Remember? Yeah. And no. there he worshipped the Lord again. By sacrificing shit. By sacrifice and shit. More than likely. Yeah. It's an altar. Yeah. That's okay. what you do. Right. And also probably burning some incense. They did that a lot, I think. You think? They probably. had incense back then? Well, yeah. It was yeah. probably more like sage or something, right? Or some I mean, some kind of smelly good. they just good, like lit on fire. Some kind of smelly good yum-yums. Okay. I don't know. I'm just assuming. Well, the Lord liked the smell of burnt flesh, so. <laughs> <laughs> that nasty. <laughs> Lot, who was traveling with Abram, had also become very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, and many tents. But the land could not support both Abram and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. It must have been a lot of shit. Could you imagine having so many animals that you're like, okay, our animals are eating too much grass. And there's that many and like, is it just the two of them taking care of them? I guess. And and the slaves. Oh, that's right. They got slaves. Yeah. I'm My sorry. Bad. Servants. My bad. Whatever. They were slaves. Yeah. But the land could not support blah, 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 blah. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. Hmm. My slave's going to beat your slave up. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land. Oh, so there's also these other people right. around So it wasn't just their... Herds that was taking up resources. Right. It was all these other people. Right. The ites. The ites. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> Abram said to Lot, let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and we will separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the left. If you spin around, wouldn't it be the opposite way? Well, I think that... <laughs> I mean, I think he's trying to be reasonable. Right. No, I, I mean, it sounds reasonable. I'm just saying it's vague to say left and right. You'd think they'd use like east and west or... Well, okay, but if he's standing there like facing him and he's got his hands out, then, you know, the person that he's talking to can see which way he's saying like, you want the right, I'll take the left. You it's want the reminded right, me of that REM song, Stand in the Place Where You Were. <laughs> I mean, they could just as well have saying that and right. made their decision that way. Yeah, I think that would have been better. Lot took a long look at the fertile plains of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Zoar. Zoar? Zoar? I don't know. Sure. The whole area was well watered everywhere, like the Garden of the Lord or the beautiful land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It's funny. They mentioned Egypt as this, like, well... You know, like nice land, but I always think of Egypt as like dry desert. Desert, yeah. yeah. I think it's funny that they're mentioning. You know how the God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's like, no, we haven't fucking got to that part of the story yet, right? Like, again, bad storytelling. Yeah. Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. He went there with his flocks and servants and parted company with his uncle Abram. So Abram settled in the land of Canaan. And Lot moved his tents to a place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and constantly sinned against the Lord. After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. 
I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. Doesn't that seem like... The Canaanites um, were already there. I know. But I was thinking, doesn't that seem like um, the Lion King when Simba's like, look as far as you can see the, right, all right. the pride lands. Yeah. These are all yours. I, just, I mean, like, but possession is in the Bible. I know. I know. Like God was giving possessions to people. Yeah. Of, of land. Yeah. Like that, I don't that know, people just, were already living on. It was always so much more appealing to me, like the Native American think, like where, you know, you take from the land what you need and that's it. And you and, don't you know, own the land. You don't own the land. Right. You live on the land and with the land and among the land. Right. I always like that so much better. Yeah, me too. I think I think our God had it wrong. I think God had it wrong. I I think God I don't think that we were made in God God's image. I think God was made in man's image. Yeah. And I don't think that God exists because well, yeah, that's I mean, gross. I mean, we made that clear. Right. So. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, there's no way that I could ever believe in a God who cherishes um, possessions and land and the raping of women and the sacrificing of animals. Right. I mean, like, God sounds like the worst of us. He does. He sounds like a terrible, terrible person. Right. He sounds like Trump. What? Well, it's funny to me. Like, you know, I think of God as like the capitalist assholes that take all that they can. Mm -hmm. And I think of Jesus kind of as like the socialist revolutionist. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Isn't and, that funny? And they're yeah. supposed to be like the same. Right. Right. Entity. It's the same. It's the same quote unquote religion sort of kind of whatever. They're, you know, there's. They're supposed to be the same entity. Just right. different versions that appeal to different parts of us. Yeah. But, like, there is absolutely no part of this God that appeals to me in any way whatsoever. No. No. And I don't understand. Like, even if God changes and does things differently through Jesus, I'm like, but you still did these other horrible things that, to me, are unforgivable. Definitely. So, I don't know. It's a good thing I'm not a God. Right. And I will give you so many descendants like that, like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his camp to Hebron and walked near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. There he built another altar to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I guess if God is giving you like all that stuff that you would... Um, build another altar and kill some more animals and be like, awesome. Well, yeah, he's like Thanks, hooking you bro. up, man. Yeah. He's yeah. hooking you up. Yeah. Just this whole thing is grotesque. Yeah. I'm glad that's the end of that chapter. Yep. But unfortunately, I think there will be more to come in future chapters that will disgust me further. Well, yeah, I'm quite certain of it because it seems to be the going theme. I know. I just was hoping that as we read through this that I would discover that my preconceptions were wrong and misplaced and that there would be some loveliness and maybe there will be further but so far genesis is like trash well, why would our preconceptions be wrong like there these stories are so prevalent in society and so prevalent in our world that we're bound to know them well enough to know the basis and the basics of this religion and where it's based from so our preconceptions are probably more often than not fairly accurate i would say I mean, you're right. You're right. I just, I was hoping that there would be some kind of redeeming value, some kind of beauty in it that um, had escaped the the narrative part, you know, that I only knew about the grotesque parts and that I would read through this and be impressed with it and be like, yes, but all these beautiful things. And thus far, it's just trash. Yep. And I'm just disappointed. So not this week. Maybe next week. Stay tuned. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> All right. Join us next week when we go over chapters, what are we on, 14 and 15? I think so. That sounds right. Okay. I'll know better next time. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Husband. Yes, wife. Um, is there a way for people to contact us? Well, sure. They can uh, get on our Twitter account. We have a Twitter account? We do. What is it? It is sacrilegious underscore D. Like D for discourse? Yeah, they wouldn't let me put the whole thing, so I had to shorten it to underscore D. I hate them. 
Yeah, that's disgusting. How do you spell sacrilegious? Do you know? I don't want to. Just look it up in a <laughs> dictionary or something. I don't. I don't want to do that right now. You know why? Sacrilegious you, underscore d k. Because you messed it up and I made you fix it. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. What about an email? Yeah, we got that too. What Sac- is it? Sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail dot com. Oh well, that's easy. Yeah. As long as you know how to spell sacrilegious. Right. Well, definitely get a hold of us. Let us know what you th- thought of the episode. And, you know, any comments, hate mail, we love that kind of stuff. Also, you could answer some questions that we leave throughout or, like, correct my pronunciations. Yeah, they're please. they're probably bad, wrong, and horrible. Because we suck sometimes. Absolutely! Oh, also, you know, if you like this shit or whatnot, um, like, give us a like on your podcasting app and stuff or even leave a comment or something. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Goodbye. Okay,